Hi fellow reefers, I'm Eddie of Eddie's Reef Aquaria. Today's weekly video is on a new acquisition that I got, uh, Pavona. I bought it at Worldwide Corals. It's a frag and I thought I'd talk about it briefly, uh, the care tips of it and things that you should know about it. So let's take a deep dive into the video. Hold on. Okay, and here we are in front of the tank, focused directly to the Pavona. Well, first of all, uh, to start off, it's an SPS coral. And this coral, uh, of course, this coral is a, a frag, but the mother, the mother colony, the origin is from either the Indian Ocean, Australia, and even the waters of Africa. Now, this coral uh, is known to be either a plating type or a branching type showing either a furry or a flat appearance growing towards upwards or outwards. This one, of course, um, is one that, that, as you're noticing, is actually a towering type. It's um, like a, a branching type of coral. It's not plating. Now, they do have common names. And, of course, uh, the common name that people refer to this coral is, of course, a uh, pavona coral. It's also known as a lettuce coral, a potato chip coral, and a cactus coral. This one mainly, uh, it's typically uh, called a cactus coral. And if you would have seen the mother colony, or shall we call it a bigger frag that I had seen previously to this one, it actually looked like a cactus. Now, they've been seen in colors like this one, green, also tan, and like fluorescent colors. This one happens to be, uh, I would say, gearing toward the uh, fluorescent. Also, it's the setting of the lights that I have, which it makes it pop out more. Now, when it comes to the care requirements, um, this coral uh, should be placed on moderate to high lighting with also moderate to high turbulent water flows. Now the care level of this coral, when I did a little research on it, it's really a moderate to high type of caring. In other words, an intermediate level of experience is that you would need to take care of this coral. But yet, when I went to other um, pages of it, you know, other topics, it shows it as an easy coral that anybody can keep. But I would say that being that it's an SPS coral, that would uh, really show and would alert you that being an SPS, uh, I would say yes, that I would gear towards the moderate to high intermediate type of level of experience because of the different parameters that you must keep in check and also that it would need more moderate flow in uh, moderate light. Now when I looked up the placement, it says you can place it in any part of the tank. Now uh, the rule of thumb, and I have gone through this and I've talked to um, different people, especially at Worldwide Corals, and what they say, and by my personal experience being in this hobby for many, many years, I will say, and I will agree, that if you have the proper, um, shall we call it, uh, acclimation of any coral, it doesn't have to be this coral, but uh, mushrooms, LPS, and of course the SPS and the acros, the sticks. Once these corals are acclimated, you can really place them any part of the tank. Of course, being an SPS, you're not gonna put it on a area that's shade, that it has uh, shadows. If you do that, well, you are risking that it might, you know, get like, let's say, pale and not actually show its true colors. But I'm a firm believer that a coral that has been properly um, acclimated, you can place it in any part of the uh, tank. And that holds true because I have had uh, candy cane on, on this tank. And if you read and you look up LPSs, and you look up candy canes, they say that you should put them in mid 
to lower level of the tank and, and to, you should uh, not have it bombarded with a lot of light and a lot of flow. Yet, the candy canes that I've had, if you go back to previous videos on this tank, you see that I had them way up there on the right hand side of the tank, no problem whatsoever. And at the same token, I've had them way down on the substrate. So I'm, I'm a firmly believer that a coral properly, uh, prob uh, properly uh, acclimated, you can place them in any part of the tank. But of course, take into consideration, in this case, it is an SPS. Now going on uh, to water parameters and water conditions. Well, for this type of coral, the temperature should be between 72 and 78 degrees Fahrenheit. When it comes to the DKH, it should be between 8 and 12. pH, I found out that it should be between 8012 all the way up to 84. And the CA, of course, the calcium, should be between 400 and 450. Now, uh, the final uh, information that I want to talk about this coral when it comes to Provona corals are that they definitely are uh, filter feeders. So that being said, um, they do consume plankton and other microorganisms from the water column. Well, and there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the video. You found it educational. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Next to it, there's a little bell. Hit that. That's the notification uh, bell. So every time I upload a video, which is weekly, uh, you'll be the first ones to be notified that Eddie's Reef of Korea uploaded a video. And before I end the video, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take a close-up shot so all of you see the progression of the cyanodino issue that I had. And let me tell you, the um, Brightwell Aquatics product that I've been using, the Microbacter Clean, is working. Of course, it takes time. It's a bacteria. It can take four to six to even eight weeks. But I'm noticing a, a lot of uh, change. Uh, it's, it's cleaning the rocks. The cyano is already gone from the outlets, you know, the exhaust from the tank. It's already gone. My cleanup crew has been cleaning it. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to show you a uh, close-up shot of the substrate. I haven't raised the lights. I still have it. Like, if you follow me, you'll notice that I did have to bring the whites, the red, the red and the greens down to 4%. So that's why you're seeing that the tank looks a uh, little darker. But the camera that I used, uh, the SLR Sony that I have, I'm able to make adjustments on the aperture and I'm able to view it and all of you out there can actually see it with more light. You know, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pause the camera and I'm gonna take a close-up shot on the substrate. Okay, so here uh, on the right-hand side, there's been uh, quite a substantial improvement. Right there, uh, I would see a lot, uh, but now there's still a little bit, but it's starting to dissipate. And then when you go towards the center, uh, like I was mentioning before, what I'm, what I'm having now is like green patches, no longer brown. And I uh, talked, I happened to talk to uh, Brightwell's Aquatics yesterday, uh, and he told me that that's it, it's starting to get rid of it. So you see what you see now, before it was like brown patches, now it's like green patches. So the stability of the tank is starting to come back and check when it comes to this issue. And then panning towards the left, on the left-hand side here, you really see a uh, little more from the other side. That's probably the uh, current uh, water flow. But again, it's only uh, if I was to ramp up the uh, lights, what you would see is actually green and not that brownish halo that I had before. I talked to uh, the gentleman over at Brywalls, and because some of you that have followed me for quite a while, sometimes I would get uh, remarks that I have like some kind of algae on the rocks, which uh, I'm aware, and I would have to, with a dedicated toothbrush for this tank, every other day I would have to go ahead and clean it. Uh, no matter if I went ahead and, and I uh, lowered the nutrients, it was still there. Well, apparently, 
uh, this product by Brightwell Aquatics, the Microbacter Clean, will get rid of all of this. But it's a process. Like they were telling me that this can take four weeks, six, eight. I'm up to four to four and a half weeks. And there is a substantial improvement on it. So I thought I'd uh, bring uh, an update on this issue. So as I mentioned, uh, the cyanodino, uh, it's going on its path, it's being eliminated. I found out also, I did a little research, and I found out that when you get cyano, guarantee you also have dino. It's, you know, the, it's a combination. They, I mean, it's rare that you're going to have just one and not the other. So like I said, you know, it's improving, uh, everything's going great. Uh, I'm able to add fish at this point in time and corals you know so you'll be seeing more videos how you know people that follow me know that i do videos on every animal that, that i get and i talk about them so like i say at the end of all of my videos happy reefing thank you very much for watching this video and have a great fantastic day bye bye